In 1316, Louis X, the King of France, played a particularly exhausting tennis match. Afterwards, he drank a large quantity of wine and then died. It has been suspected that he was poisoned and thus the sport of tennis recorded its first scandal nearly 700 years ago. Nowadays, cheating in the sport doesn't involve poisoning or regicide, but it does involve doping, berating officials, lying, match fixing, and uh, this? I'm Karen Today, we're gonna learn about all those incidents and more. Tennis most cheatingest moments are coming up right after this. Summer is right around the corner. And you know what that means, vacations and traveling. But before and after the fun stuff, you know what happens, sitting for long periods of time. But what do we have? Anti-boredom in the palm of your hands. That's right, Raycons, premium wireless earbuds for a fraction of the cost in a range of colors, patterns, and fits. Raycons are worn by Snoop Dogg, and you can try them out risk-free for 45 days and return them if you aren't happy. They feature seamless Bluetooth pairing, six hours of playtime, and a noise-isolating fit. I plan on using my Raycons this summer at the batting cage so I can drown out any annoying kids who still have their careers in front of them. And thank goodness Raycons don't fall out. These are seriously the best to wear during activities. So after this video, you can support this channel by going to buyraycon.com forward slash five points from the link below and get 15% off your purchase. Again, go to buyraycon.com forward slash five points from the link below and kick your summer off with a 15% discount. Brought to you by Raycon. Before we get started, this list is a mix of on-court and off-court incidents. Oh, and cheatingist is totally a word. A word I made up. Let's get into it. We start our list off with an incident involving Serena Williams. Get used to that name. Though this time, she was the victim. In 2003, at the French Open, just as Williams was about to serve, Justine Hennon raised her hand to indicate she wasn't ready. Williams continued and faulted, thinking she'd get a do-over. Well, she didn't, because the chair judge didn't see the hand raise. Williams got rattled and lost the next four points, and eventually the match in three sets. Hennon received no punishment, I guess. You really have to hand it to her. This is the beginning of the video and it's not getting any better. I think it's safe to declare drugs the winner of the war on drugs. In 2015, American Wayne Odesnik was barred from tennis for 15 years for his urine having more drugs in it than a plane piloted by George Jung. This was his second time pissing hot in a five year period and that was due to him being a giant asshole on the tour which led to him continually being tested and like any good cheater he acted shocked saying he would never knowingly take a banned substance. Let's just give him a fist bump and call it a day. In 2001, sisters Serena and Venus Williams were set to face each other in the semifinals at Indian Wells in California. Moments before the match was to begin, Venus pulled out with a knee injury, handing the younger, less decorated Serena an easy trip to the finals, where she defeated Kim Clisters. When Venus, who had showed no signs of injury, retired, it led to a chorus of boos from the crowd. Those boos didn't stop the next day in the finals either. Elena Dementieva had accused Richard Williams, the sister's father, of picking which sister should win versus letting them play it out, something that had long been suspected. Richard didn't take any of this well and accused the crowd of making racist remarks, though none of those have been confirmed. Serena would not play at Indian Wells for 14 years in a self-imposed ban. She has beaten her sister 19 out of the 31 times they have played. Did you know you cannot hit the ball on the opponent's side of the net unless it bounces on your side first? I'm sure Novak Djokovic knew that, but it didn't stop him from hitting this ball over the net and gaining a point, which he got to keep. The incident happened in Miami in 2014, and I guess the Hawkeye replay system doesn't cover obvious shit like this. That wasn't as bad or as funny as the 2020 US Open when Djokovic was disqualified for this vicious act where he nearly decapitated a poor line judge. Apparently that's a major violation. I'm still not sure if she survived. Boris Becker 
doesn't like losing. In 1995, he was getting ready to close out the Monte Carlo Masters final against Thomas Muster. He double faulted. He then lost the tiebreak and the match. Despite being the underdog and at the tail end of his career, Boris accused Muster of cheating. On the court, he almost seemed to be dying, he said. Just 24 hours later, he is down two sets to love and is running quicker in the fifth set than the first. Either he is a good actor or something unbelievably magical happened overnight. Muster wasn't cheating, he was just good, and Becker got hit with a $20,000 fine. You know how athletes say they didn't knowingly put substances in their body? Well, this one maybe has some truth to it. Maria Sharapova got popped for a drug called meldonium in 2016 and given a two-year suspension. Meldonium is a heart medication she had been taking for 10 years prior. And Sharapova missed an email saying it had been now put on a list of banned substances. Either way, that only got her suspension reduced and she came back in 2017 and eventually retired in 2020 after winning a few more titles. In 2007, Nikolai Davidenko and Martin Vassilo Arguello faced off in what should have been a lopsided victory for Davidenko in Poland. It didn't end that way as Arguello would end up beating his first and only top 40 opponent in his career. Several million dollars were wagered on the match, which normally would get very light action. All the money was on underdog Arguello. Immediately, suspicions of match fixing were raised. In 2008, Davidenko was cleared. However, leaked files found 82 instances of messages sent or received between Davidenko and the head of a sports betting syndicate. Just cause you were cleared doesn't mean you didn't do it. Right, OJ? It's amazing how in a sport with a ton of line judges and an electronic ball tracking system can miss so much. Like in the 2011 US Open doubles finals when Philip Petscher looked like he hit a winner off his racket, but it instead went off his leg. Petschner did not admit this and they won the point and eventually the match. Marcin Matkowski refused to shake his hand afterwards. Though like, that's on the judge, man. Pay attention. Usually in cases of doping, it's pretty clear whoever is cheating is a cheater. Not always. In 2003, Mariano Puerta was nabbed for clenbuterol, an anti-asthma medication. He was banned for two years, then came back and made it to the French Open final. He lost, but later was hit for etilfrin, a stimulant. This time he got an eight year ban, reduced to two years after it was determined that it was such a small amount, his performance just wasn't enhanced. Did he cheat? Who knows? Everyone's probably cheating. I told you Serena was on here. In 2009, she lost a match to guess who? Kim Clisters when she threw a racket and yelled at a line judge telling her, I'll take this ball and shove it down your bleeping throat. Whoa. She received a code violation and instantly lost the match. Nine years later at the US Open final, Williams also smashed her racket and called the umpire a thief. Those things are behavioral, not cheating. However, Williams did receive a code violation for receiving coaching during the match, a big no-no. Her coach, whose name I will not attempt to pronounce, was seen on camera gesturing to Williams. Serena would also end up losing that match. In 2010, in the Austrian Tennis League, I guess things got a little heated in a match between Daniel Collerer and Stefan Kubik. Collerer had slapped the racket out of Kubik's hands earlier and was being his usual asshole self. Well, it looks like Kubik took matters into his own hands and he had to Djokovic. Not sure if there were any repercussions, but the crowd cheered it on. They did not cheer that joke on, however. Remember I said Daniel Collerer was a jerk? Well, the Austrian was accused of match fixing from 2008 to 2011 when he was found out and ultimately banned for life and fined $100,000. He was known to associate with gamblers and even bet on matches himself. He appealed the ban and it was overturned. Just kidding, only the fine part was. 2011 was his last year as a tennis player, so he must have been guilty. And now for tennis, most cheatingest moment. 
If you thought the previous entries on match fixing were bad, I got five years worth for you. Since 2016, there have been numerous incidents, usually associated with Italian or Russian betting syndicates. In a report by the BBC, no event was safe, including Wimbledon, with them examining over 26,000 tennis matches. In 2018, Nicholas Kicker was banned for fixing matches. He's not even allowed to attend tennis matches. Brothers Kareem and Yusuf Hossam received lifetime bans in 2018 and 2020, respectively. I guess match fixing runs in the family. Brazilian Diego Matos got hit with a life sentence in 2019, and the women haven't been left out of this either in 2020. There was an investigation into a women's French Open doubles match. It makes you wonder if the grind is worth it at the lower levels because grifting on the side seems to be pretty common. And if all this is organized, isn't that considered racketeer? God damn it. Good thing this video is over. Please subscribe for more interesting films on all sports. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next vid.